and uh, this and this will be my i think third or fourth uh, uh, group in this uh, uh, session that i have addressed and uh, uh, so uh, can i share my screen sure ma'am visible now i'll do the uh, slide show Yes, it is visible. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, like I said, uh, it's uh, uh, actually such a pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, I can see a lot of uh, my friends from the beautiful Northeast and from different states of Northeast. Uh, I must share with you that uh, I got an opportunity to stay for a couple of weeks in Northeast early this year, in the month of uh, uh, March. And I could visit uh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Arunachal, all these places. And that was my first visit. And it's you live in such a beautiful part of the country. And <clears throat> it's not only geographically beautiful. Uh, I loved uh, interacting with the people, the simplicity, the sincerity. It was a pleasure to be with uh, uh, your uh, uh, other statemates and uh, people from Northeast. So I'm so glad to be talking to you all today. Now here I would like to say that uh, uh, some of you may be busy with your action plans uh, or the homework which you have been given uh, and and uh, you might think that, uh, you know, this uh, topic, cyber uh, uh, safety, everybody keeps on talking about it. And uh, what's so new in that? So today I am going to bring new things because every day new crimes are being committed. And uh, uh, we all need to be uh, very, very careful. So I suggest that uh, you leave your work for next uh, uh, one hour and uh, uh, be along with me. Uh, I would like to make this session as uh, interactive as possible. Um, can't do much because of the paucity of time and also the fact that uh, uh, all of us are in uh, online mode. Uh, but I will be asking you some questions and uh, uh, you have to reply yes or no or uh, in the numbers one, two, three, four or whatever. So this way, uh, you know, uh, I can at least get to know your thought process. And another thing is that uh, uh, kindly switch on uh, your videos. Uh, I That is my kind request to you. Uh, because as teachers, you know, it is so important to see the your students when you interact with them, see your participants uh, listening to you. And uh, if you're staring onto their uh, blank screens, uh, you know, just with a name, it doesn't give that kind of uh, uh, fun. So kindly switch on your videos and uh, uh, put on your uh, uh, learning caps and be with me for next one hour. And uh, the questions can be asked uh, uh, at the end of the session. Uh, we will have 15 minutes to uh, for the question to be asked. So the topic is cyber safe, uh, safety and security in, a, in cyber space. I don't need to tell you much that we live in interconnected world. And see, if, in this world, uh, we are connected with the people who are living in the places where, where we probably didn't even hear their name or we've never visited geographically. Uh, they are very far off. So internet has made the world a global village and uh, we can connect with anybody. You know, something we hadn't thought of uh, 10, 15 years back. So these uh, uh, wires have actually connected the uh, world. Now, with, with uh, 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 and the world is at our fingertips, isn't it? Uh, we can reach any part of the world, talk to anybody, conduct any activity, collaborate with people. Otherwise, how would I be collaborating with the, uh, you all today? And uh, at the click of the mouse, uh, we can go to supermarket and we can buy stuff. Uh, we can travel to different places, we can book our travels, or we can actually, uh, you know, use our Google Maps and uh, uh, the Google Earth and uh, using the 3D images, we can go to the rainforest virtually, or we can go around Statue of Liberty, or if FM Tower. So uh, travel has also been made uh, easy. Banking, as we all know, a lot of financial transactions we are doing online and it's become the mobile banking and internet banking are very, very popular. So uh, banking, yes. And then socializing. 
a um, lot of new friends on an average uh, uh, an adult has about uh, uh, three to four hundred friends online a very conservative figure and the young people have many many more okay so and out of these uh, about 30 percent maybe the friends we have not even met in our life so new friends can be formed, new friendships can be formed and entertainment, we are hooked on to the YouTube, we, are, we, we download movies, we download podcasts, we download songs and uh, in fact, a phone is everything, it contains uh, uh, everything these days and definitely the knowledge, uh, we know how uh, the digital learning has uh, helped during the COVID times when uh, uh, the schools were shut. And as uh, teachers, you all made sure that you donned the hats of uh, the, you, you are a pedagogist. And some of you may not have actually used technology before uh, in that manner. And uh, some, and all of you donned the hat of uh, digital educators overnight and uh, started conducting online se sessions, started using the applications uh, to make sure that your learners, your students don't suffer. And I'm also connected with you today because of this online uh, uh, thing. Now, we all know that we understand that internet brings with it tremendous social possibilities, opportunities, and responsibilities. I think all of you will agree with me. So it is, uh, I'm going to break it here. Social possibilities, I have already talked. Opportunities for growth, we already, uh, like, you know, you're learning today online. You can, you can access any library you are a member of online. I can access libraries from different universities in US also. But at the same time, internet brings with us lots and lots of responsibilities, doesn't it? So I think you all agree with me here. Now for the next question, I want you to put yes or no in the chat box. And the next by question is, but are we ready to seize these opportunities and face challenges in this new world? Do you think we all are ready? Because most of us attending the session are digital migrants. I, I, I would uh, uh, probably clear it, internet migrants. None of us, at least I did not have technology when I was uh, in the school. And uh, definitely uh, internet came even after many years I started to uh, work. And uh, uh, because I've been an educationist for past uh, uh, 20 years. And uh, so people like us, we are actually the migrants who were not born in the digital age like our you know, children and grandchildren are. Okay, so are we ready to, uh, with that kind of, you know, a background that we have, do you think we all are ready? In every respect, especially our genera uh, generation, in fact, in, uh, including the youth also. So if uh, uh, you can put down your uh, uh, answers, sorry, uh, if, if you can put down your answers in the chat box, that would be nice. So I'm just seeing the chat box. Uh, yes, you're preparing ourselves. Yes, yes, very good. If you feel yourself that you are ready, uh, then it's a very, very good thing. This means you have, uh, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm finding that somebody is asking a question which is not related to the session while the uh, session is going on. Uh, 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 Mr. Tucker, uh, you want to upload some motion animation. I understand that it's important for you, but please don't do it during my session. That's my kind request. Okay. Uh, so uh, most of you say, yes, we are ready. Uh, yes, we are ready. But then what happens? That technology, uh, uh, you know, changes every day. We may feel that we are ready today, but... What happens? Tomorrow, the new issues come up. Technology is advancing. Did we ever think of AI chat GPT a year plus back? We did not even know that there was something like uh, uh, chat GPT or generative AI or anything. And today, that is giving us a lot of opportunities. It has made the life easy, especially for the content writers and uh, uh, a lot of students who take uh, their uh, uh, copy their essays from there. And uh, uh, but doesn't it bring new challenges? AI has brought with it a lot of opportunities and possibilities, but AI has also, artificial intelligence has also brought with it a lot of challenges. I will cover those challenges with regard to cyber safety in a little while. Okay, 
so uh, realities and challenges. Now the interconnected world, fine, it has made our lives easy, but it has also made our life unsafe because there is no privacy anymore. Do you think our lives are private on the internet? No, we are not. Even if we put our settings to whatever minimal, our lives are not private. And we are open to misinformation. Anybody posts anything, we believe. A WhatsApp text that we get from somewhere, uh, which is claiming to have certain facts, we believe. We tend to believe. Okay. And, and this financial fraud is a huge menace. And we are totally vulnerable to financial frauds. I'll give you the reality in my next uh, 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 couple of slides. So uh, this is an example of a fraud email. Okay. So... <clears throat> uh, if somebody gets an email like this, like say a student gets this email, instead of the name, dear network user, this email is meant to inform you that my university networks has expired. Please follow the link to update your password. So what happens that, you know, it is sent to somebody who is, uh, uh, you know, uh, hoping to get admission or who's just got admission in, X, in in my university. So he or she receives this message and then uh, the person clicks on the link. The person updates the password and shares the personal information and the account is hacked because that person did not see so many things, uh, did not actually, uh, you know, uh, see the finer details. That is the mail really from my university. Is the URL correct? Are the uh, is the logo correct and so many uh, other things. Now another example. I think you must have come across this a lot. Uh, like you know, uh, uh, Tata had the uh, anniversary last year, so there was this fake uh, message that uh, Tata is giving uh, uh, their uh, Nexon. And then if you if you answer these five questions, uh, you you will be winning Nexon. It this this had come to me also. And uh, uh, a lot of people fell prey to this. So what they started to do, they started to uh, go screen by screen and fill information. A lot of information was about themselves. They started to click links. And once they started to click links, then those uh, uh, links which contains uh, malicious virus, uh, malware, actually uh, were transferred onto their uh, uh, mobile. Right? So uh, now have you or any of your friend received links on the email for the following. Now this you have to uh, reply to me that did any of you receive any of uh, any links of this kind or any of your friends have received links of this kind. Promising rewards, free gift holiday. Like it is Cadbury is celebrating its anniversary. Tata is celebrating its anniversary. British Airways is, uh, 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 you know, giving uh, free tickets. Friends, nobody gives anything free. So I'm waiting for you to write in the chat box if you have come across or anybody has come across any uh, any one or all of these uh, uh, messages, urgent messages. The other one is asking you to pay the electricity or the cable bill and there will be a link that pay this electricity bill today else your connection will be disconnected. So this is this message has created a sense of urgency. And obviously you think that, OK, I might have defaulted or, you know, some new uh, uh, payment might have come up. And who wants the electricity cable to be uh, uh, connect, uh, disconnected? So one clicks on the link. So I would say when you get a message like this, instead of clicking on the link, you have you should call the electricity board and find out if there are uh, there are any dues rather than clicking on the link. Because the moment you click on the link, that malicious wire will, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, malicious virus will get transferred onto your device. Uh, there is a lot of uh, complete KYC, else your account will be closed. Uh, a lot of us receive this. Banks tell you that we do not ask for KYC through text or on the phone. They say that KYC should be on the bank's website or going to the bank. So I would suggest go to the bank and do the KYC. And a service message asking you to click OK, else the phone will uh, switch off, else the, else the, else the phone will be for, uh, you'll shut down. A friend of mine received this uh, last message. Uh, this happened just about a couple of weeks back. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, she got this message, the homeowners being asked uh, to click on OK button. And there was a fake uh, uh, Government of India logo, which was actually not the right logo, but then the look and feel was the same. 
So uh, homeowners were being asked to click the OK button if they own their home. Uh, else, uh, you know, they will not receive the intimation from the government. A lot of people clicked it because there was a fake Government of India logo and it, the, the message appeared to be very, uh, uh, you know, um, very uh, uh, untrue, um, very, very true and not at all fake. So they clicked on it and the virus got transferred onto their computer. So now let me go to the chat and let me see uh, uh, how many of you are replying. Uh, I'm not getting too much of uh, uh, response. Uh, 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 yes. So Mr. Sagar says, yes, more often in May, WhatsApp and sometimes on Instagram too. Yes, it happens. A lot of you have said yes, yes. Often, uh, uh, Ms. Nandita says uh, uh, often. Uh, our lucky uh, uh, SK Angila uh, uh, says not yet. You are a lucky one, ma'am because uh, you have not yet received. All of us, including me, have received this, uh, these messages. The best is to uh, avoid them. The best is to delete them, not to click on any link. So uh, uh, these are the uh, new forms uh, of uh, um, issues. So then I thought, uh, earlier I told you that I'll give you some reality. So the reality is that we are growing as a nation. And as a nation, we, are, we have 40% share in global digital payment. You know, our UPI system is considered as best in the world. And uh, uh, recently, the Chancellor of Germany had come and a lot of leaders had come for G20. So everybody was impressed by the uh, uh, our uh, uh, digital payment system. But that's the good part of it. But the not so good part of it is, is uh, there have been 7 lakh complaints on the 1930, that is the national helpline number, in the month of April itself. Can you imagine that if 7 lakh people have complained on the portal, how many would have been would have suffered and not complained? So this is how the cyber crimes are rising. And all of us must be getting fake calls. Like just as, as I was starting the session, I got a call from a state, uh, uh, you know, where the STD code was of Chhattisgarh. I don't know anybody in Chhattisgarh. And I got the call. So obviously, it's a fake call. So immediately, I uh, uh, disconnected. Okay. So every day, uh, you know, at least uh, I get about, you know, 10 to 12 fake uh, these kind of calls. And a lot of them in the afternoon. There is some kind of trend. So the best is not to take call from an unknown mobile number. Okay, don't take a call from an unknown mobile number. If there is a mobile, somebody from mobile has been calling you, you could call back that number from your landline to reconfirm who's on the other side. Okay, because they, you know, these hackers are so smart, they call you and then they will talk to you. And then while you're talking, there will be somebody else who's stealing the data from uh, uh, your phone. And uh, uh, there have been 250 crore of online fraud, 276 crore of online fraud using debit credit card in 2022-23. Uh, friends, all of us, we own at least two debit cards, minimum of, of two debit credit cards, two to four we own. It's, we feel it's very, very easy to own a debit card because you can make payments, you can you know go to ATM, withdraw the money. Yes, we should avail these uh, services which are given to us, but then we have to take total, total care. So these figures are very, very alarming and more alarming figures are going to be followed. Okay, uh, so uh, this FDRC research has uh, uh, shared the cybercrime distribution in India. Okay, uh, out of which uh, the financial frauds occupy 77.41%, uh, uh, which is huge and which is a huge challenge and which is a huge concern. Then comes social media fraud, system fraud and others. Now I'll explain a little. You probably know what these are, but I'll still explain uh, a little. So social media related crimes are, uh, for example, uh, um, fake impersonation or uh, uh, impersonation or fake profile. It can be intimidating email, intimidating message, and it may be even online job fraud online matrimonial fraud also it can be there then there is uh, cheating by impersonation stalking sexting so these are the social media frauds and because of it our personal safety gets uh, 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 hampered 
okay so uh, hacking identity theft these are all related to a personal safety all related to uh, online social media frauds because they put up so much of our information on social media and uh, you know in a real lives uh, we do not want to share a personal information with others but when we are online uh, i don't know why we become so bold uh, that we start sharing information on a social media uh, handles and we don't even care whether those handles are you know uh, you have their uh, your friends have access to them or friends of friends have access or the general public has access we don't even go and see the social media uh, the uh, uh, safety settings on a social media now coming to the system frauds it may appear as 1.57 and uh, but uh, uh this is or uh, this all these actually this leads to a lot of uh, uh, financial frauds so the system frauds may include um uh, you know somebody's hacked your email somebody's hacked the we website and they have they are, they are defacing the website and somebody has hacked your system so there is data breach then there is email hacking and there is uh, uh, you know uh, somebody has taken the data and they are asking for ransomware so if your personal data gets hacked uh, through your system, then the financial frauds can happen. And the uh, other crimes are uh, uh, mostly cyber trafficking, online gambling, ransomware, cyber terrorism, racism, and, you know, a lot of other crimes. So now talking of, I will mostly talk of, uh, 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 concentrate on financial frauds in my latest slides, but I first want to start with the social media fraud because social media fraud, system frauds, and other frauds all lead to the financial frauds. Everybody is after the money. Everybody is after the information. Friends, information is the new oil. Information is the new currency. And uh, 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 Mr. Haralal Naha, can you please uh, uh, put your head up? I'm sorry to call out your name, but it was distracting me to see you like that. Okay. Uh, I know it's a very lazy time of the day, but uh, uh, do uh, give credit to my time. That's my request. Uh, so the social media frauds and the system frauds and other frauds lead to financial frauds. Okay, so now there are, you know, we have to look after our personal safety assets. Okay, uh, so uh, one minute. Uh, so I had talked of data and system security. There is personal safety and there is financial safety. So let's start with personal safety. So personal safety on your right hand side, how can you ensure personal safety? What are the personal details? Personal details, sorry, my system is actually going very fast, faster than me. Uh, so uh, uh, personal safety is safety of your location, safety of your personal details, safety of your family, safety of, uh, uh, you know, security of, uh, you know, your income, your finances, all these leads to uh, personal safety. Okay, so uh, how many of you have your ge geolocation on all the time? We need to have the geolocation on if let's say uh, uh, we are using uh, uh, cabs like Ola, Uber, etc. because we need to book the cabs. At other times, I don't think we need the geolocation on, but we keep it on. Why? Because we just don't bother. Uh, you know, and then if you keep your geographical locations on, all the apps can track you. Okay, you went to this place, this place, this place, and take and make a make a profile and understand the trend. And then uh, you know they'll probably realize that okay, from this time to this time, you're always at work because the, your geolocation is on and your house is empty. You know, or this time to if 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 they want to come and do something in your office space you you leave office at five o'clock so if they want to come and if you are in some place where the sensitive data is there so they might come after that or they they might even try to uh, harm your children so keep your geographical location on uh, i'll give you an example a few years back when i had my geographical location on i did not realize the implication of it I would go, let's say I have I have gone to visit a friend in the hospital. So because my geolocation on, the apps took my data that she's in the hospital. Believe you me, I started to get messages about, you know, uh, from the path labs and other places for the free blood tests, for the free checkups. So I'm talking of about uh, uh, seven, eight years back. And I was uh, 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 flabbergasted. 
okay i was shopping in some place and i you know i was buying shoes i started getting advertisements from uh, uh, you know the other uh, uh, like adidas and nike about you know sale here sale there so what actually happens is that the these apps track you where you go and and this is an example and if the thieves and if the hackers want to take advantage of it they can so keep your geographical locations off then control app permissions now everybody wants to download uh, us to download their app okay because apps and using app is also very very uh, easy okay you want to count the number of uh, glasses of water you had you want to count your uh, uh, you know uh, steps you want to play the pay the mobile bill the cable bill everybody will say that uh, download the app now let's say your uh, cable guy has an app okay and they say that download our app and uh, pay through that that's fine it's fine but then there are some considerations for apps before downloading app before downloading any app you have to see the rating of that app when is whether it's a, it's a, it, uh, generally there are five star ratings and whether it has good rating secondly you have to see how many people are using that app if there are not too many people using that app it may be fake you know what is a user reaction to this app so let's say you are teaching a, a subject called a, a geometry or uh, and then you want to download a math app or something of that kind and uh, somebody says okay this is a fantastic app to help your students learn geometry trigonometry okay so uh, download this app so you get very excited and then you want to download the app go online go to your app store and check out the details first that then you will realize that okay this app has got very good uh, ratings it's got very many users it appears to be made by an authentic source then i can download now it doesn't end there even when you're downloading the apps need permissions and you know we are sometimes so excited to download that app we want to to learn chess and we want to download chess now why should a, a geography app or a geometry app or a chess game or a cable guy need access to your contacts we don't realize we tick 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 every box why should they have access to your gallery you know so you are sharing the your mobile is so rich in your personal information sensitive information we tick 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 everything and then all these applications have access to your personal accounts uh, they you know some apps will say access to whatsapp now why should if i'm paying a cable bill that guy would want access to my whatsapp okay so you have to see that i will not give this now remember when you are downloading an app there are certain boxes with asterisk only those are necessary only those are necessary to fill the boxes which don't have uh, uh, <clears throat> asterisk okay on the left hand side are optional you can you do, do not give the you may not give the information there so next time you're downloading an app keep these things in mind okay the third is use strong passwords i mean uh, don't we when we go out of the house uh, don't we use a strong lock or do we take a small uh, uh, padlock and lock our house and leave our house for the day when we are going to work you know that would be foolish similarly try not to use the same password everywhere and use a strong password these days websites are very small are uh, very smart and when you are inputting the password they tell you that uh, this password is uh, you know weak this is medium and this is strong use a strong password and the other thing is that do not store passwords on your phone or on your device your phone or your uh, laptop can be hacked data can be accessed and then all your passwords will also go there have a small diary keep it at home very safely in a drawer it's a little bit of effort but that effort has to be made for your personal safety the safety of your children the safety of your family the safety of your data the safety of your money okay then there is two factor authentication i think a lot of you must be following it two factor auth uh, authentication is one is the password and the other is the otp some websites sensitive websites also have the multi factor authentication where the fingerprints or something uh, uh, need to be given those are those sensitive websites 
okay, uh, then avoid public Wi-Fi. It's very easy that, okay, I'm traveling, I'm sitting at the airport, I'm sitting at the uh, mall or at the uh, railway station. And uh, uh, since I'm waiting for the train to come, so there is this public Wi-Fi, might as well see a few videos. Uh, wouldn't that be exciting to pass the time? You know, sometimes we do that. So, but public Wi-Fi's are very weak, you know. It's like putting your uh, bags with valuable in the public space on a, uh, in a uh, crowded, in, in a public crowded space. You never do that. But then you go to this public Wi-Fi and then we start to, you know, just uh, uh, entertainment sake, we just start to see videos here and there. Now the security, the firewalls of this public Wi-Fi may not be strong, may be weak. And there are already hackers sitting there for people like us who throw caution to the wind and go to this public Wi-Fi and then, you know, access them. And then they can access the data. Then there is something called as juice jacking. Okay, juice jacking is a very interesting thing. Again, uh, I haven't carried my, uh, like my, my phone is out of battery and I'm sitting at some place where I can find, I see, oh, fantastic. There is a, a USB port and now I can, uh, <clears throat> and now I can use it because then I can charge my phone. Okay, so immediately we put uh, uh, our charger in that USB. But you all are smart people. You know what is USB for. USB is an input as well as an output device. So that USB may be inputting uh, the power into your uh, uh, phone. But out, out by output, it is taking in all your information. So the information is being you know, taken all your information on your that particular device is taken by that USB. So this is called uh, uh, juice jacking. Then the other is don't participate in online service. There are a lot of online service. Uh, you know, which heroine do you resemble? How will you look when you are 80 years old? You know, and what is your characteristics and all that? And they'll tell you to upload your photo and give a, a small survey form and give details. I find even the most educated and informed people and a lot of my own friends, despite me conducting these sessions, they do. Hmm? The, uh, today I got, you know, my one of my friend who is actually in a very good position. You are like Vine who will age very gracefully in the few years and there was her photo and five characteristics. So Madam would have filled in the survey form giving in her details would have shared her photo. Obvious, obviously, these uh, online uh, apps will not, you know, tell you the truth. They will always flatter you. So we like that flattery. So all these are taking away the most important thing, your data. Okay. Now recheck your uh, uh, privacy settings. I will take you through certain privacy settings on WhatsApp and Facebook, and we will have a quick run through of that. And lost and found USB. This is very common. I'm walking uh, uh, in the uh, in my educational institute or in uh, uh, some corridor or in the market. I find a USB. Oh my God, I found a USB and it looks to be very new. I was looking for a new one. Fantastic. I will, you know, and then we plug it into a system. That USB might have been planted there so that some innocent person like you and me can pick it up and insert it into a system. And then what happens? The malicious software gets transferred and a system gets hacked. So these are few little, little things that you have to do for your personal safety. So moving on to personal safety only. So invasion of privacy. Invasion of privacy happens. Like I said, there is nothing called as private in the online space. Now, uh, I, I don't want to ask a question, who is on social media? I want to ask a question, who is not on social media? Who is currently not, from, not, not on social media? And it's a question which actually I will applaud. If you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, not uh, go, given into the temptation of being on social media. I am on social media and sometimes I feel like getting off it. But because of my work, I cannot. So who's not on social media? I'm waiting for some replies. So I assume all of us are. 
on social media. So like I said, that privacy is a myth on social media. And our data, our activities, our actions, our emotions are all being captured by these social media uh, uh, platforms. And these are just uh, six platforms I have listed. There are so many of them. There is Snapchat, there is LinkedIn. There's, there's, there, uh, there are so many uh, uh, of them these days. OK. So when we, let's say I go to Instagram or I go to Facebook, uh, they ask us to uh, fill the form initially, okay? Again, a lot of us don't realize that our phone number, our address, our date of birth, our uh, play, place of study, uh, place of birth are all optional. They don't have that asterisk, but we happily give out this information. We don't realize because we are so excited to be online. And the other thing that we do is that we don't do the, they, we, we go ahead with the default privacy settings, which are public. We should go and, you know, check the privacy setting and set them according to our needs. Okay. Then we move into a new house. Okay. The first thing we do is that we check all the doors and windows, we check the uh, grills, we check the security of the house. Don't we do that? And wherever we need more securities needed, we put extra locks, we put extra grills and extra things to save us from physical harm and to save our money, to save our children. But then in the online world, we just put everything online. We, we, we kind of lay it out online over there. Why we do that? I tell you, there's a psychological element to it. Okay. Like you are attending the session and I'm giving the session. So where are we? We are in the comfort of our, uh, you know, institution or we are in the comfort of our homes. Okay. A lot of you probably are in the homes. I can see that. So psychologically, you feel very safe. When I go to a railway station, I take my bags and I keep all my bags in front of me. And if I have five bags, my hand will be on one, my elbow will be on the other, my foot will be on the third. You know? And there will be two bags uh, uh, from my neck yeah? and I'll keep my purse in front. Nobody can take it. Don't I do that? And, you know, I think all of us do that. Because we can see, okay, so many people and, you know, somebody might take my thing away and I don't feel safe. But when we are working from our secure places, it may be a bedroom, drawing room, our staff room, uh, you know, anywhere, we psychologically feel safe. And that is the same thing with the children. And then we post things here and there. So friends, whenever you are on social media, Close your eyes and imagine that you are on a very crowded railway platform or a bus station. Okay. Or do one thing. In front of you, on your workstation, wherever you are, just put up where, wherever your laptop is, put a picture of that. And that will remind you that not to post uh, your personal information because you are actually in a public place. What you're posting is going to the entire world. Okay, fine. So I'll move on to the next one minute. Okay, so this is your uh, uh, geolocation, which I was talking about. So uh, go, if all of you might be using Google Maps and uh, go to Google Maps and make your location history off. Okay, take a screenshot of this. There's no need to do it now. You can do it later. So take a screenshot. So go to your maps, go to the Google maps. I have all, I have circled the areas. One is location history off is very, very important. And then uh, it asks you home and work. I have not set home. I have not set work because I don't want the world to know where I live and where I work. I'm sharing, I should not be sharing this information with everybody. So go to home. Don't, if you have put your address, remove it. Home address. Why do you want everybody to know your home address or your work address? So this take screenshot of this and then I'll go to the next one. So now uh, uh, again, take screenshot of this, please. Uh, this is your setting your WhatsApp. 
and uh, uh, I don't have so much of time as to take you through the settings because the session started late. Uh, the, because I do take 10 minutes uh, for you to, and normally what I do is that I ask the participants to set their security during the session. But since the session started late, I'm skipping that. So I'm just telling it to you, go to, uh, you know, see where my cursor is, go to settings, you will come to privacy, which is circled red. And when you click on privacy, you will come to this screen. So you can start a privacy checkup. Okay. In the privacy checkup, last seen online. So click on nobody. Why do you want people to know when you were online? Two minutes back, two hours back or whatever it is. You know, this is something you're private. And keep it private with you. Okay. And then you come to profile photo. Profile photo should be only to my, uh, either to nobody or to my contacts. Okay, about also to uh, uh, either nobody or my contacts. Okay, groups. Mine is coming 1059 excluded. That means I have 1059 uh, contacts on my phone. So I have excluded all. This means nobody can add me onto any groups. This is very important, friends. Uh, it might seem inconsequential to you now uh, because what happens, there are different kinds of people, uh, you know, doing different kinds of things, having different kinds of goods. And let's say there is somebody in your contacts, that person you connected with, you know, when you were traveling from X place to Y place uh, uh, in a bus and he was or she was friendly with you and you con included her. But that, but, but that person may have different motives. It may be, uh, you know, so th that person may be operating something which is not legal, which is not permitted, um, permittable and has included you in that group. Now, what happens? The group is conducting some illegal activities. For example, your name is in those groups. Let's say though that group has uh, 20 people, but your name is in that group. So what happens if that group is conducting illegal activity, police catches it, you will be also the one to be called because you are a part of the group. And then if you if you say that, but I did not know I was a part of no friends, you have to know, you have to be aware. So uh, when I say that nobody should be able to add you in groups does not mean that you should not belong to any group. We have so many educational groups. You may be having faculty groups, friend group, you may be having family group. So what happens if you do that, that groups excluded, then if I want to add you in the group, I will send you the invite from my WhatsApp, the new group, and that invite will come to you as a link. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you will get a message that Nisha Dua has invited you for this session. Please click on the link if you want to accept the invite or not. So only when you click on the link and accept the invite, you become part of the groups. Okay. And status also, everybody is you know, fond of uh, putting up status uh, uh, and then that goes to you know everybody. Now, third one is very important. Control your privacy setting and set up WhatsApp just the way you want it. Choose who can contact you. Leave out the people you, you don't know for many years or, for, or where you feel that I don't know the antecedent, I don't know the background of this person. Control your personal information. Click on these arrows. These arrows are there on the right-hand side. And then, set, and then uh, you know, uh, uh, redo your settings. Add more privacy to your chats by, uh, you know, the two-factor authentication, encryption, and all that. Uh, and add more protection to the account. So uh, take a screenshot and uh, after the class, along with your other homework. Now this homework, you don't have to submit to anybody. You have to submit to yourself to keep yourself safe. Okay, so it's up to you. You want to do this homework or you want to forget it and leave it, you know, and when the, uh, I hope nobody gets uh, in this group or ever or any of my friends uh, get into any of my frauds. But let me tell you, if something like this happens, if some hard earned money goes, you know, it it's very heartbreaking, right? Then similarly on Facebook. So I'm not going to tell you Instagram and so many others because uh, uh, this, it is similar. So on the Facebook also, you will go to the settings here. Okay, and and once you go to the settings, you go uh, 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 and privacy over there. This is on the uh, this is again in the red box. So you have personal and account information. It will give you the details if you have put in extra information you did not realize it during the signing up. So you can delete it. You can remove it. You have the power 
to change things in your account. These platforms give you that power, but a lot of us, one, may not know the power, or number two, are very careless. Till such time we get caught. Okay, the you know when you change your setting to private or to friends or to friends only, you can do that. You can you can make small groups. Let's say that you had a party, a family get together, you know, with, with your children and nieces and everybody, and then there are a lot of photos of the children. So what we do, we without thinking, put up these photos on the on our social media accounts. We don't realize that they can be downloaded and using the uh, you know AI using the deep fake uh, technologies, they can be morphed. And, you know, and small children can also get into harm because of our carelessness. Then the second is password and security. I said your password has to be strong. Make your uh, uh, these social media platforms, which are actually an extension of ourselves, you know. And the other thing is that you could do privacy checkup. This is a very interesting feature. You run your privacy checkup and these platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, they will tell you that uh, uh, you know, th there is a gap in this privacy, gap in this privacy, you need to do this. It's a very interesting exercise. And then audience and visibility, profile locking. We put up everything on, the, uh, on, on, on our social media and then we leave it for everybody to see. So anybody can access it who just wants to snoop around or just want to have fun or just, uh, or you know, um, want to misuse uh, uh, your information. So very important to do your lock your profile by locking the profile then some very basic details are uh, available uh, but your entire time your history is not available to anybody that is available only to friends when you say profile locking the people who are your friends whom you have accepted as friends or added as friends only they can see your profile and not the you know random people who are looking for uh, prowling around those hackers uh, you know like you know when you go to these dark areas you have those uh, you know not so good people prowling around and looking for you know to uh, pick a pocket to snatch the chain or something so there are a lot of lots and lots and lots of them in the online world okay and so uh, please go ahead and uh, uh, change your profile uh, settings on all your social media account, including Google. Okay, Google has very smart security features. So uh, click on, here you can see my cursor. I have not put my photo on Google. Why should I put photo? You know, if I'm uh, having a conversation with somebody, that somebody knows me. And why should I just put my photo, which can be downloaded and morphed and uh, misused? Sorry, uh, and and uh, misused. So click on so um, my name is N uh, Nisha, so it starts with N. So I click on this, and then this falls down. Okay, go to privacy and personalization, and manage your data and privacy. This is in blue. This is a link, and it will actually remind you, inform you that you should, uh, if you have not set. <coughs> <coughs> If you have not set two-factor authentication, it will remind you. So please go back and use these features. Take a screenshot of this as well. So friends, homework for you, homework for your group. Now, let me come to that 70 plus percent of frauds, you know, which the our society, people around us are plugged, are, uh, you know, uh, they fall victim to. Before that, I'll tell you a story. Not a story, a real incident. Uh, I stay in Delhi and uh, in my neighborhood, my friend who is an educator and husband is also a professor. Okay, so very aware and educated. He fell, fell prey to WhatsApp scam. I got a call from them that uh, so-and-so has lost 75,000. I said, how, could he, how did it happen? So they said that there was a call on WhatsApp, a video call. The call was from his friend in US whom he had not met for a long time. And that friend was talking and telling him that please transfer 75,000 to this account in India because my sister has to undergo emergency surgery and I'm not able to send the money from here. Okay, and he requested him. Now this person thought there is his friend's photo with the lips moving. Okay, and he took it for granted. He went ahead and he transferred the money. Uske baad, after that, 
he went to his WhatsApp and he, and you know, he uh, messaged his friend that I have from the, to, the, 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 the friend, the XYZ, who, whose WhatsApp number he had, that I have transferred 75,000 to your account as asked. The friend said, I never asked you. So this was a scam and this is true. And uh, uh, I'm from Cyber Peace. We also have a helpline and we are actually help. We have lodged an FIR for them and we are following up the case. So what happened? That because of, uh, you know, these deep fake technologies using artificial intelligence, the lips of any, any still picture can also be moved in the manner you feel that person is talking. So this is one financial fraud which happened. The other fraud was that, uh, uh, again, it happened um, in the city where uh, four or five people who use the same ATM, uh, they had money withdrawn from their uh, uh, accounts after using the ATM. Then it was found out that that ATM had, uh, you know, when you insert your card, so there is a slot. So this, there was a camera in that slot. Okay, and uh, the car details as they were inserted were captured, right? And then there was a, a small, small camera on the ceiling which captured the keypad. So even the pin which was entered was captured, okay? And then the money, obviously, then if anybody has these kind of details. So these, um, so whenever you go to ATM and withdraw the money, you have to check the insert, the, the slot where you insert your card. I would always suggest that try to use the ATM which are outside of the bank, which are inside, just outside the bank, uh, not the ATMs which are in some corner, some dark dingy place, because they may not be that kind of security. And if there's an ATM uh, near the, uh, you know, just uh, near the entrance of the bank, a lot of ATM uh, banks have, that, that that is much more secure because there are guards over there. So just giving you two latest examples which happened. So there are these OTP scams where your OTP is asked. I talked of this. KYC scam, I talked of this. Credit debit card, one is I explained to you. The other is card skimming. Do you know what is card skimming? That I go to fill petrol. Okay, so I'm sitting in my car and that person says, how will you pay, I'll pay my card. So I am so lazy to get out of the car and go to, you know, if the person is not carrying the ATM machine, I'm very lazy to go inside where the ATM uh, machine is uh, attached to the power because they don't have a remote one. I just give and that person returns. Meanwhile, what could happen is that the card's photograph may be taken. So your card details and the CVV at the back is taken and then so anybody who has taken it is happily shopping online because online what they ask you is your name, is the card number, the expiry of the card and the CV. Now that is already shared. So not saying you should not use, but you know, if you have to use, then these days people use portable ones. Then also be careful that there is no ceiling and there is no capture of that. So get out of your vehicle, park your mobile, park your car, you know, and then pay. So be careful. Uh, that's what I said that, you know, this is a very assumed kind of false sense of security we have. Okay. So net banking frauds are the most, most common. Right. And uh, uh, so while using net banking, we have to take care of a, a few things. First of all, I will tell you that if you have the time, go to the bank and do the transactions yourself. This way you develop a rapport with the bank people. You also, it's an exercise for you, you know, you, you know, and then most important is your safety. But if you have to do net banking, then your password has to be secure. You have to use virtual keyboard and uh, you have to up all the settings. But the first of all, never put on Google. Let's say I want to do a transaction from HDFC bank or an ICICI bank, or then SBI bank. Now, you know, I might type on Google, SBI bank. Okay, a screen will appear, you know, the, uh, and the screen may have a false logo of SBI or HDFC or ICICI or any bank. Okay, and the, you know, the even the uh, page may be 
similar to the landing page, the original landing page of the bank. But we don't notice these uh, irregularities. So what we do, okay, I want to withdraw money, I want to transfer money, I want to see my uh, account status. Okay, so when you never ever Google a, for any financial transactions that you're doing, whether it is paying for your burger, your pizza, or transferring money, or you know, doing any other kind of payment, always, you know, you should go to the bank, you should get the URL, type the URL in the box. And I know it is very difficult to type it again and again. And then right click when you, when you have opened the, uh, uh, the window of that bank or any other you know, financial uh, organization, right click and save it in your reading list. So when you've saved it in your reading list, the next time open your reading list, click on that. And also take care that SBI may be written as SIB. IC, ICICI may be written at ICCCI. We don't notice. You know? And all of and some of you who are psychologists will understand that when we read, we don't read every letter. We just, even in reading, you know, we just uh, give reading very quickly. So check out whether the spelling of the bank is correct. HTTP, instead of HTTP, all these financial organizations have S. S stands for secure. There's a padlock just at the left side. The padlock, the HTTPS, check out the uh, spelling once, twice, thrice, verify. Okay? Don't we do that? When we go to the bank and we have put in a checkbook, or the, a passbook and other things on the table, we put it back in a bag and we check whether we have put. And then, you know, uh, tendency is before leaving that table, we check, we look behind and we say, that, I hope I haven't left anything. Apply similar uh, settings to your online activities also. Okay. And the last but not the least is uh, log out. Don't click on the uh, cross on the right side or the left side because that is not secure. You have closed it from your uh, display but it is still open in the online space, okay? Always log out and close that uh, uh, screen there, okay? Uh, ransomware, ransomware is becoming, unfortunately, very popular in the education institutions because education institutions uh, do not have, have that kind of expertise or sometimes even budget to put the firewall in place. You know, COVID, after COVID, uh, there has been rampant increase in the frauds, in the hacking, in the, uh, you know, and a lot of things like ransomware, etc. in the educational institutions. Okay, so even in the institutions where you're working, the schools, the colleges, follow the hierarchy. The passwords have to be secured. Passwords don't have to be uh, shared. And there has to be hierarchical, uh, hierarchical uh, access. Everybody cannot have access to everything. Let's say the first year students are, uh, uh, you know, um, they are the B.A. students. Okay, they're the B.A. students of, uh, let's say, paper one or paper two. They are different teachers. So paper, uh, so the marks of paper one should not be leaked to, uh, the password should not be given to paper two. These are the things we follow in a real life also. Then there is phishing, smishing, and machine scams, I'll explain. And there is deep fake frauds, which I'll explain. Uh, I'll go quickly. Phishing is when somebody gives you a call, a fake call, and takes your uh, details. Phishing is when, uh, uh, phishing can also be through email. And phishing is when through voice call. And smishing is through SMS when links are sent to. Uh, SIM swap happens when somebody has uh, uh, obtained a uh, replicate and replicated uh, your SIM. They have a duplicate SIM. And what they do is that, you know, they can block you from your skim, uh, SIM and they can access, uh, you know, whatever information which is being received. Let's say that you are doing transaction and uh, your OTP is to be received. So if a person has your duplicate uh, SIM, he, uh, that person will block you getting the OTP. That person will get the OTP and then will do the transactions. Okay. Then deep fake. Deep fakes are very, very dangerous. I said AI has brought with this good or bad. And I, what I example I gave you uh, of my uh, friend who lost 75,000 uh, uh, rupees uh, was deep fake because the picture was altered, appeared to be speaking. 
uh, there are deep fake news, there are news, there are deep fake uh, videos, deep fake audios. So please, friends, uh, be aware of all this. So uh, on third, 9 July, a man in Kerala lost 40,000 to uh, artificial intelligence based scam and somebody claimed to be former colleague asked him for money. So this is becoming very, very common. So quickly now, I just have five minutes. Uh, in the, the hotspots of India cybercrime. So Delhi, Haryana, Gujarat, Andhra, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Assam, West Bengal, and Jharkhand. This is not to say that other places do not have, but these places uh, have uh, many, many more. And even if there is somebody in Jharkhand, through the technology that, you know, they can reach out to Northeast also. And, you know, a very sad thing is, a lot of uh, these people, you know, th there was there was a news report in Washington Post uh, uh, in US that, you know, these youngsters from Jharkhand who are actually not educated, they somehow acquired the accent and they, they, they are calling up people and claiming to be from FBI, claiming to be from tax department and money has been taken from US also. And, uh, you know, this sad report was reflecting uh, very badly on us as a country. Okay, so uh, the only thing is that we got to be smart. They will be thieves, they will be hackers, but our safety is in our hands. Okay, so uh, this was so prevent, prepare and protect. It is in your hands, your safety is in your hands. We don't stop going out because we will be run over by the car. We don't stop sending our children to the park because we feel they may be unsafe, but we take precautions. We don't send our children to the park, which, which is uh, uh, where not too many people are there. We so don't send children to the park after dark, but we do that. We go out, we drive, we walk, because we take care of our traffic rules, we take care of ourselves. So it doesn't mean that you, you, this technology has to be blocked, but technology, we, our safety is in our hands. So prevent, prepare, and protect is our uh, a mantra and uh, the do's are always visit the official website uh, uh, which I said and uh, keep your de contact details updated with the bank to get transaction alerts. Uh, secure your debit card uh, 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 debit or credit credit cards daily limit. You, I mean normally the limit is very high so go online and keep your, keep a limit on your debit credit cards and if it if you're and you know by default they can be used internationally and because internationally if a fraud happens then nobody can help and uh, uh, so internationally you, uh, you have to go and in the settings you have to disable use strong passwords report any unauthorized uh, uh, transaction if you get sms alert immediately call a bank and freeze your account don't enter upi pin or scan qr code to receive payments okay uh, uh, save your banking username and password, uh, 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 you know, not on the browser. A lot of browsers ask you, save this password, never. The password should be only in a small diary, which is at home. Okay, don't click on any links, etc., which are through SMS. Try not to download third-party applications because they may be full of uh, malicious uh, links. And share your ID, login. Do not share your uh, CVV details, ID, login, password, etc. Quickly, what to do in case you have been due? You can take the snapshot of this uh, uh, also. It will help you sometime, at least to help somebody else who may be in trouble. So in case you feel that you or somebody has been due, Call bank customer care and ask them to freeze the account. The credit card, the debit card, the net banking, immediately please. Okay, whatever money has been taken in the first time, uh, it should not be much because you would have probably been smart and set your limits. Okay, the next step is to call 1930 or go to the national helpline cybercrime.gov.in. I'm again sharing in the next slide. And go and file FIR in your nearest cybercrime police station. And if that happens, uh, something related to your card, immediately change the all the pins and passwords of all your accounts. Okay, and run the phone diagnostics. Fine. So this is just a repeat, just a repeat, which I'm not going to due to paucity of time. I have uh, talked of everything which is here. Okay. So just have a quick uh, glance at it. Uh, 
no reporting. There is social reporting if somebody is getting uh, uh, bullied or trolled or there is some stalking happen. Then there is platform reporting if the account has been impersonated and you have been blocked out, like your password was not so strong or somebody got access to your password. They've gone to your Instagram account. They have changed the password and you've got locked out. And now all obscene things are getting posted out of there. So you can, with the uh, uh, screenshots, you can report to platforms. Uh, these All these platforms take action. They are pretty good at that. Then there is legal and formal reporting. Uh, uh, the legal and formal reporting is one is to www.cybercrime.gov.in. They have a fantastic, <laughs> very efficient reporting system where you can uh, share the details, upload your documents, etc. And you can also call them 1930. And uh, then there are, you have to also file an FIR in case it is a financial fraud. And there are those cyber safety cells uh, for uh, children, younger children, you can, uh, th there is Childline Helpline and uh, Cyber Peace uh, uh, Foundation has got the helpline and we have a 24 by 7 helpline where we attend to the all the uh, uh, these issues. So friends, um, be smart, be safe, your safety is in your hands. Like I said, that uh, our uh, you know UPI payment system is the best and the model in the world. It is up to us to use it uh, uh, carefully. If we are careless, it is not the system, it is not the platform, it is mostly us. They say human beings are actually, their carelessness is actually uh, the most important factor in any crimes, in, in, in any cyber crimes. So friends, use uh, uh, technology smartly. Uh, travel on this technology highway, okay? And uh, uh, don't be left behind because you're scared. Make yourself aware, make your family aware, make your friends aware, and travel safely and smartly on this information super highway with your friends, with your children. When we travel on the highway, we travel at high speed and we are safe unless we or anybody around us is scared. Don't we follow the speed limits? Don't we follow the traffic signals? Like we do that, follow all the rules and uh, you will be safe on the information superhighway, okay? Because technology is the future. So thank you uh, very much for hearing me out. And I would like to get the questions. I would also like to get the feedback, please. So I'm not sharing my screen anymore. And uh, you can raise your hands. And uh, Ms. There Lee, is one question the uh, in the chat box. Uh, Madam, uh, how to sign out the emails in smartphone? Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, there's a question, how to sign out emails in smartphone? Uh, signing out the email in the smartphone is similar to signing out on the device. So you just uh, click on that right, uh, you know, underneath your name and sign out button will be there and you can sign out. As you do on your laptop or desktop. So there are 106 participants. I uh, I look forward to a lot of questions. Um, one more question. How to be safe from duplicate SIM? See, duplicate SIM, uh, government is cracking down on uh, uh, these uh, duplicate SIMs. And uh, uh, don't share your personal details with anybody. Because that person, if you have shared your personal details, and you've been careless about your personal details, and that let's say that hacker knows your details has all you has your photo has your aadhaar card details and other details so they, that person can pose as you assume your identity and take a, a duplicate sim okay so don't uh, don't be careless with your information information is in has to be in your hands okay question uh, from the they were asking about SIM uh, swap scam just recently saw an article they want to discuss, I think. Yes, I, I, I that, uh, you know, whoever has said that can uh, uh, ask the question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Keep the mics from, open, ma'am. Yes, ma <laughs> uh, Kirsum Bajan from Arunachal Pradesh. I think you are uh, asking the questions, uh, uh, otherwise it's faster. So let's... Uh, 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 you know, open the chat, open the uh, mic and uh, everybody could ask the question. Yes, ma'am. I, I have given the rights to the participants so they can unmute themselves and they can ask the questions directly from you. So, Mr. Kirsten Bomjin. 
थैंक यू सो मच मैम हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैम यू आर ऑडिबल uh just so, yes i recently i saw an article that about seam swap scam na so i want to know about it can you please explain us sorry ma'am you have to be louder hi ma'am aap to sunai de raha hai uh nidhi ma'am if you can uh, repeat the yes. question for me uh yes ma'am actually she wants to discuss about the sim swap scam just recently she saw in article ha so what about it ma'am what is your query uh actually in that article mein aisa tha ki ek advocate ka sim ko uh track kar ke usse uh 1 and 50 lakhs wo wo kar diya bol ke scam kar diya bol ke tha to wo cheez se kaise bach sakte hai uske हाँ वही मैंने पहले बोला ना कि देखो इवन अवेयर लोगों का हो रहा है तो अपना पर्सनल डिटेल्स अपना आधार कार्ड अपना पैन नंबर ये सब किसी के साथ ऐसे मत शेयर कीजिए गवर्नमेंट भी कहती है कि आधार कार्ड वगैरह डिजिटल है तो उनको लॉक कर दीजिए हम लोग केयरलेस हो जाते हैं अपने इंफॉर्मेशन से और वो इंफॉर्मेशन कोई भी कभी भी कैसे भी यूज कर सकता है ठीक है जैसे हम बाहर जाएंगे अगर हम अपना वॉलेट या पर्स है रख देंगे कहीं हाँ और इधर हम जूस पी रहे होंगे और काउंटर पे हमारा वॉलेट पड़ा है हम उसको बॉर्डर नहीं करेंगे और कोई पैसा ले जाएगा तो हम बोलेंगे पैसा ले गया तो गलती किसकी है गलती हमारी है हमने अपना बैग संभाल के नहीं रखा थैंक यू मैम तो मोर क्वेश्चन प्लीज Yes, I I I am very grateful yes. for the conversation. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, they are asking locking Aadhaar card is important. Very important, very. And government always says you have to lock your Aadhaar card. And if you are sharing uh, your Aadhaar card also, your personal digits, the last digits have to be blacked. Okay, which actually are your identity. It's very important. No question. Okay, I think that's it. It's also going to be three thirty. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, giving.